Hi, welcome to Thinking Green. Uh, I'm Rana, and I'm joined tonight uh, by two members of the New London Arts Council, Eddie Long and Sarah Falman Flores. And welcome. Uh, there's a lot going on. I think now that like people are getting outside a lot, and the weather, well, except for like Not yesterday, today. <laughs> today had really Careful. been conducive yeah. to outdoor events. Uh, it's like the city is waking up after a long hibernation. So I'm yeah. glad to see you here tonight. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Um, I guess I wanted to start out having you just talk about the New London Arts Council and what it does, what its focus is, and what your roles are. Well, sure. So a brief overview. I mean, I guess I could just do that quickly by sharing our uh, focus, our, our main focus and purpose, which is uh, advocacy, resources, and networking. So advocacy mm -hmm. is just listening to our area artists and making sure their voice is heard uh, in the municipality. For resources, um, you know, financial, um, occupational, um, th there are sc scholastic, there are all types of resources that benefit artists and we try to make sure that our uh, local artists are connected to them. Um, and that's from a state level, a federal level, and a city level as well. We want them to have all the advantages they can. And then networking, which is just um, our excuse to hang out, really. Yeah. <laughs> but we do, <laughs> we do like to have events where, like I like to say, leave your notebook at home. And this is just a chance for artists to kind of bump into each other and um, hear what they have going on and, you know, make connections. And so um, that's, that's a brief overview of the Arts Council, and I'm happy to be joined by the newest counselor on the New London Arts Council who represents visual <laughs> arts, Sarah. Hello. Um, so yeah, I'm newly appointed. Um, I've been involved in the NLAC um, as just a contributing member on and off since 2019. And uh, it's more so really evolved into me being regularly there uh, for the past year and a half, two years. And so I'm really excited to represent the visual arts in that. Um, yeah. And one thing that's really interesting to me, thinking about the arts in New London, is that there are all kinds of arts. There are visual mm -hmm. arts, there's music, there's theater. There. Mm -hmm. uh, now, is the Art Council um, made up of representatives from each of these disciplines? Different, yeah. Yes. So that's how we, that's exactly how we're structured. Um, Sarah is the newest counselor. She is taken over for Diane Barcello, who many viewers will know. Yes. Um, and so she represents visual arts. Um, I do our marketing and promoting, but like my fellow co-chair, Emma uh, Palzier Ray represents theater. Um, and we also have uh, other people representing performing arts, like dance, um, a counselor representing music. Um, so yeah, we try to, and then of uh, literature as well. So we try to make sure that every art discipline, or most of them at least, is represented. So, um, I don't know, we have one slide that I think is mostly the logo of your arts council. Oh, we sure. Can show it. Yeah. We might That's as fine. well. We have a slide we can <laughs> yeah. show it. And I'm guessing you designed it. Yes, 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 I did. <laughs> yeah, I haven't actually ever really talked about what the arts council logo looks like, but yeah, I, I did design it. It was, so, yeah. I'm pretty proud of it. So, if we can see slide. Uh, yeah. I think it's number one or That's one it. A or something mm -hmm. like so, that. So yeah, just some movement there. If you notice, the colors are not random. They are kind of cascading up and down and diagonal. So you see like the purple NLAC, and then you see in the middle the lime green NLAC, and it just kind of rotates and moves. And I just thought that was fun. I figure a 
logo for something like an arts council shouldn't be boring. A little playful. Yeah, a little yeah. playful. Uh, and then the next two slides actually talk about um, or show some of Sarah's work. Sarah, again, representing visual arts, is a wonderful muralist. Thank um, you. And has done, I'm not sure the agency, Sarah, if you want to talk oh, to them about. Uh, uh, yeah, so I actually was commissioned um, from the Norwich DCF office. Uh, they um, joined forces with Rise Up. It's a nonprofit organization. And so I was commissioned to work with a handful of selected artists to renovate their um, visitation room. So this was the um, mm -hmm. visitation room that's supposed to be like the game room and so when I initially had stepped into these rooms they're very like gray the off-white you can tell um, didn't have a lot of love mm -hmm. you know in that space and that's really what it's there to you know foster is love so um, I was able to kind of flip these around and it's like one of my uh, you know pride and joy kind of things. I love the purple. Yeah yeah. Here's the next one. Um, and this one was more so like the family room where, um, you know, these are spaces where families can um, hang out in, you know, it is supervised, but they don't need to feel that it is supervised, right? They're able to like enjoy an environment that um, promotes growth. So, yeah, very Great happy message, to do yeah. it, yeah. And did, were you given a lot of artistic license in this? Could you just go with it where you yeah. wanted to? Yeah, so um, they just wanted colorful, they wanted um, something that promoted positivity, and so I kind of took that and went with it. Um, so each room kind of had a different theme, so this was more so like nature themed, the last one that you had just shown um, was more like space themed, and we did have one that was water themed as well, so we kind of just went with uh, the flow of it all. <laughs> And these were the two last two slides we got hold of, and I'm really glad we did. Yeah. I know. I have to <laughs> say I'm embarrassed that I forgot to include them. I'm like, no, this is very important stuff. Um, and then the next uh, three slides actually are more of Sarah's work, something more recently that uh, she's working yeah, on. Yeah, and so um, recently I kind of joined forces with a small business owner and friends of mine that are also creatives um, in Norwich and New London and they just started opening up a new business. And so I was able to help them flip their RV. Um, before this, it was a camper uh, that they had renovated the year prior. Um, so they renovated the inside and I renovated the outside. <laughs> and um, it is not done, but I'm really excited with where it is and where it's gonna go, so. Again, I thought it was done when I saw this yeah. image. I, was I assumed like, it, looks it was great. done, <laughs> yeah. We wanted it presentable so they can, you know, get going. It was involved in the um, Norwich, what is it, Memorial Day Parade. And so we had kind of like a deadline we had to meet to get it in the parade, so whatever we could get on is what we did. And it will be more glorious looking forward. Yes, yeah, just need some finishing touches on this side and uh, the other side will be completely redone as well, so. And we have a couple more slides to show some detail. Oh yeah, there's the. Yeah, so that's us in the parade, um, the two business owners to the right and their daughter on the, on, uh, the left there, and then me. <laughs> and then the next one I think is the, yeah, there he is. Yeah, and so oh. that's really the part that needs a little bit more details. Um, you know, as an artist, I feel like you critique everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I see what's not done, but I love just the, um, you know, all the feedback that we're getting with this. It makes me feel really good because we just did it just, you know, to really change things around for them. And it's just really validating, you know, hearing some of the feedback as I'm like, painting it right before the parade started. I'm still <laughs> adding details in the eyes of the frog, so. And what's the name <laughs> of the business? Uh, the name of the business <laughs> is So Delicious, and it's a runoff of You Bartending. And so uh, this business is going to be selling like healthier foods. And so they're selling cold items, um, the acai bowls, which are amazing, uh, natural juices. So they're like the thick nectar juices, and um, more will be added soon, but that's what we're starting with. That's what I dig about the, the mural on the outside of the truck is it, it doesn't, it's fun and it's captivating. It doesn't necessarily scream. Like you could have, you could have painted a pita on the side. That's yeah. what everyone's expecting, but this is a lot more fun. We were going for like, tropical, I love to use yeah. the word playful, yeah. like inviting, bright and vibrant, so yeah, very happy with how it is so far. Well, well looking at, at the murals you've done, do you uh, mostly work in, in large scale things? Because it seems like, you know, <laughs> from the very little I've seen, mm -hmm. it looks like, you know, the, the goal is kind of to envelop people with this sense of, energy or color. 
I love that you said that. I actually started in ceramics and sculpture. Uh, then it kind of led to relief printmaking, where I'm like car carving large stamps. And then um, in the past year or so, I've kind of shifted into doing murals. Mm -hmm. I, pr prior to this, would never really consider myself a painter. Um, and I think, you know, artists kind of choose the labels that they see fit. And at the time, I thought, you know, I don't really know. I know color theory, but I just, I was still learning the concept of like layering really is my mm -hmm. thing. So once I, you know, reached out to about the DCF murals, I, I was honest. I just said, hey, you know, I'm really looking to, you know, have some personal growth and to see where it goes. I don't have much <laughs> experience, but I'd love to take the opportunity. And I'm really thankful that they gave that to me because it really has spiraled into more. Um, and so I love creating like an immersive experience. And in those DCF rooms, in each room, we included um, a chalk wall, just because I, th I think it's important for the people that are experiencing r the room to also be a participant in it. Right. And so, yeah, I guess uh, going big. <laughs> <laughs> the, the uh, yeah, the, the murals for the, Nor the, I'm sorry, what was the agency again in Norwich? The um, Child and Family? Yes. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that's that's a good opportunity to remind folks, because Sarah's very active in the Norwich Arts community and sits on the New London Arts Council. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a resident of New London to be on the New London Arts Council. You have to contribute uh, in big ways to our arts scene and our arts community, which Sarah does. In fact, that's uh, <clears throat> bringing us into the next topic. That's actually how I first came to know Sarah and hear about uh, what she was capable of, because in New London, uh, for the last few years, we've had every other Sunday markets, and they mm -hmm. were in on Golden Street in front of the Telegraph Record Shop. And Sarah helped uh, organize and, and you know facilitate some of that. And I just like it was great work, and that was really the first conversation we had. And so mm -hmm. um, those markets have morphed into from Sunday markets to Saturday markets. So that's actually the next slide is uh, that's started last week. So every other Saturday this summer. Um, Telegraph and the Cultural District uh, here in New London have worked together to get these markets going again. So they'll be every other Saturday uh, instead of every other Sunday. But that started last week, actually. Yeah, and, they'll and be there on the Parade Plaza. Yep. <laughs> and of course, the Telegraph has moved too. So uh, yeah, that's also worth mentioning if we're talking about mm -hmm. arts in New London. The Telegraph used to have its home on Golden Street for ages, and now it's uh, in a much bigger and a really gorgeous location on Bank Street. Um, and so, yeah, they're working uh, together with area artists. Um, we have to mention Bug at the Telegraph yes. because she does, uh, they do great <laughs> things. Um, but anyways, this is the flyer here for all the different days um, that, that, that the markets are uh, happening. You can get more information uh, on the Telegraph's website or following them on social media uh, or on the Arts Council's website as well. And Rich Martin, <coughs> of course, is Rich Martin, yeah. very you know, active in uh, the cultural scene of New London. Sure. I mean, that's uh, why he's <laughs> probably the best suited to be the chair of our Cultural <laughs> District <laughs> Commission. Um, but no, he's <laughs> contributed greatly to our Arts Council in many ways. Um, was there from the beginning. Um, everyone knows his past and his history with uh, local music scene. Um, and now he's moved on to sort of uh, tourism as a whole, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the agency that is the Cultural District is headed up by the Cultural District Commission, and that's chaired by Rich. So um, I don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about murals now before moving to the next thing or yeah, not. Why not? But uh, <laughs> yeah. New London, for its size, has a lot of murals. Now, I'm originally from Philadelphia, and about, I don't know, maybe 25 or 30 years ago, a lot of murals just started getting painted in Philadelphia. But uh, New London, for you know, a downtown that's like a square mile or two, really has a, a lot of murals. Yeah. 25, so, yeah. to be exact. Exterior murals, anyways. Then there's some interior ones in the post office, the police mm -hmm. department. Well, the post office one is probably the oldest one, because that's You're from, probably right. Yeah, uh, you know, the Depression era. <laughs> yeah, that's, WPA. that's definitely the oldest one. Uh, but it's great to see that it kind of expanded. Yeah, I'm not. I guess. I guess. Can we say that the installation of the Wyland mural initially in the '90s is what kind of catapulted us into that? I really you know, don't sparked know. Sparked our interest in <laughs> murals and kept it going. 
I think there, I, I think there were some other ones as well. I, um, I think when Greg Bowerman was in New London, like 25, 30 years ago, he did some of the earlier murals with students. He, mm -hmm. he was a teaching artist. But I'm not sure. Uh, it probably was about 10 years ago that Troy Zauschnick kind of cataloged them into a New London mural walk. Yeah. Yeah, on that walk there are 24. Um, there's the, the New London sister mural in Fulton Park installed by uh, Parge Public Art for Racial Justice Education, painted, of course, by Marvin Espy. Um, yeah. That would be the 25th and newest exterior mural in New London, and I don't suspect it's the last one. <laughs> I'm definitely hoping for some more. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> actually. Yeah. I have a couple of uh -huh. spots uh, that I, I wouldn't mind seeing some modest street muraling to. I have, uh, 20, I have 22. Oh. 22 walls that I have designated could potentially oh, house a yeah. mural. Well, I'll tell you, uh, you know, we lived in Portland, Oregon for a while, and there were a lot of street murals there, and I thought, oh, this is a wonderful thing, yes. you know, bringing neighborhoods together. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I was involved in that green and golden street mural, mm -hmm. and we learned, oh, it snows. Roads get plowed every <laughs> winter here. Uh, so people who asked, you know, I, I had some people ask, oh, you know, We'd like a mural like we're in Montauk and Lower Boulevard, mm -hmm. which actually would be a great place for a mural. Mm -hmm. I said, don't paint it unless you're ready to like right. be painting every couple years because they don't last in our climate. And we have the, um, yeah. the Pride mural on uh, Eugene yeah. O'Neill mm -hmm. and Golden. Yeah, one block. Right. And that's, that's got some wear and tear to it. I'd like to see that replaced. It, it, it's really, it, it is really difficult. I mean, we, uh, the group of us repaints the green and golden mural uh, every year, and it does look really dingy. I, I'm hoping that when the uh, intersection is repaved this summer with a better surface that yeah. maybe we'll be able to go to for two years. I don't know. But... Uh, some people might notice we usually repainted the first weekend in June, yep. and we'll this year we're deferring till sometime in September because, you know, I'm going to celebrate this. It's going that that intersection as well as a lot of downtown streets are going to get remilled, repaved. Mm -hmm. yep. We're seeing that on some of the other side streets, and uh, in the long run, it'll be such a great improvement. And there are cracks, you know, two-inch cracks, you can't fill it up with paint. <laughs> no, no, so, you can't. So, uh, you know, Denny <laughs> Not Rivera for that. <laughs> designed that particular uh, street mural, so we're hoping that he'll come and chalk it out again for us. And awesome. we'll be able to paint it from scratch on a nice, smooth, new sur surface. Yeah. Well, he's back in the area. I guess yeah. uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, okay, so... Uh, Let's, we can go back to uh, the plant here and, and talk let about Thursdays. Let Loose Thursdays. What are, is it, that's something new this year, I, I take it. Mm -hmm. So tell us what it is. That's, yeah, that's all from uh, more events from the mind of Barbara Neff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, was she just on? Did I see that? No. Uh, no. Uh, uh, not on my show. I, she might have been on with Marty Olson. Yeah. I think yeah. she was. Um, yeah, so Let Loose Thursdays, um, there are two of them this summer happening. One just passed, um, and then the next one is Thursday, August 3rd, and we wanted to talk about it. Oh, first of all, let's talk about this graphic that's up. Can I just direct your attention to the back? I regret to tell you that I don't have the name of the graphic designer who created this, but do you see that that's our parade plaza with the whale tail and the right. train station and uh, our monument? I just think it's great. I just think it's great. And the fireworks in the And background. of course the fireworks, very New London. Um, but what a great graphic and it kind of encapsulates our little plaza there. Um, but at any rate, the uh, Let Loose Thursdays, uh, both of them are gonna be featuring fireworks. Um, so the next one is Thursday, August 3rd. That is a celebration of all things local. Um, locally sourced food, art, and music, as you can see there. Um, and we were happy to hear when we were talking with Barbara Neff about these events um, 
that they were looking to incorporate area artists and give them opportunities to vend. We were very happy to hear that the um, opportunity to vend at something like this would be free for artists. Um, so the less hurdles, the better, you know, for them to get a chance to, to go out and, and um, sell their work. Um, yeah, we're glad to see that because it has been a chronic complaint over the years that sometimes the out-of-town vendors of all sorts come in and our, not Main Street exactly, but our Bank Street yeah. vendors and our local it is artists our Main kind <laughs> of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, kind of get left out. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 really, I guess, it's about finding a balance. It's nice to lean into our local businesses and celebrate them at every turn, every chance we get. Um, but for some of these larger events, it is okay to have outside sure. businesses come and, and be represented, but um, not at the expense of our local uh, vendors and businesses. And so we're happy that something like Let Loose Thursday, again, August 3rd, um, will, be, will be a good opportunity for area artists. And then this slide here, um, this is a lot. We don't have to talk about all these things, but um, <laughs> The, 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 one of the main things that Sarah and I want to talk about today, um, and I'll shut up for a second, uh, is at the <laughs> bottom you can see August 19th is Pirate Days um, in New London. That's sort of a tradition. But this year the Arts Council has partnered with uh, Downtown New London Association for the New London Pirate Fest and Open Studios Art Stroll, which would be a combination of the Pirate Days that we're used to and um, an Open Studios type event. And I'll let Sarah kind of tell people who don't understand yeah. the concept of open studios, what that is. Yeah, so I talked to a lot of my friends about this, and if you're not really involved in art, you know, you're not really sure what that could mean. So I just tell them it's kind of like a bar crawl, except there's no drinking, and you're just going studio to studio. <laughs> um, and so it kind of just gives a chance for all of the local um, studios to just have, um, you know, other people that are not necessarily in their own networks coming into their space and really seeing what it's like, um, you know, each medium, people have just different types of studios. I know mine is like an at-home studio, so we're also trying to involve um, artists that don't have studios and trying to place them and match them with other venues so that their work um, can still be seen. And so we're really just teaming up with the Pirate Fest and we're hosting this open studios on Saturday, August 19th, and that'll be 1 to 8 p.m. And then there's going to be an overlap going into the Pirate Fest. So we're hoping to get some people coming out earlier in the day, um, maybe mm -hmm. some people that stumble upon Pirate Fest, or are intentionally yeah. going to Pirate Fest, mm -hmm. but may stumble upon the open studios and just wonder what is that really about. Right. Um, and so with this, we're hoping to also be on a scavenger hunt map, which is super oh. exciting. Um, you know, it just gives people a, a reason to stop in and have the chats that, you know, you wouldn't really have in general, so. Right. So I guess I, I, I'm interested in how many artist studios and galleries there are in the downtown area and whether there are artists who live outside this area that are opening their studios up where they are, you know, on the outskirts. I don't know, and yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we um, have yet to really get the numbers uh, per se, but we are hoping that we're having like a major cluster in downtown. Um, we are also involving the Lyman Allen, so that'll kind of be an offspur of cool. what we're doing. But we're really, um, not to take away from anyone that does have a studio that's not in this space, but we're really trying to get more people to just understand that there, this is an arts uh, city and that we're, you know, that there's more than just meets the eye. You know, we see a lot of tall buildings, we don't really know what's in them. Right. And so kind of just to invite people in is really what we're looking for. Yeah, that's the, the key is to um, so we settled on name Open Studios Art Stroll because it is both and, um, you know, in, in our planning phase we all kind of agreed that Art Stroll is sort of self-explanatory and if you are not familiar with the concept of an Open Studios, Art Stroll tells you enough. Um, but we wanted to keep Open Studios in there and referenced because um, certainly with something like the Duarte Building, yeah. which actually uh, is at 300 State Street, uh, yeah. houses quite a few different artists. Um, and very different. Yeah, different there's artists. There's not just <laughs> there's, people, there's a, but yeah. really different There's a radio art. station in there. WDUP 98.9 is located 
at 30 State Street in the Dwarf Building. They broadcast radio out of there. They have a yoga studio. That. There you go. Well, <laughs> there you go. Um, they have a yoga studio in there. They have mm -hmm. all types of artist painting studios in there. Um, really talented people. Uh, there's there's a nail tech in there. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. uh, Coco Dream Studios is in there who has an event coming up at the end of the um, summer as well. There's a lot of stuff happening in there. So we expect them to be sort of a crown jewel of an open studios art stroll because it is like Sarah said a cluster. That's a yeah. cluster. If you don't have time to see all the stops and you can make it to only one, go there because you can you can see so many different spots. Um, so those artists do benefit from being close to the action with their actual studio. So that's that's a proper open studio where you have people come into your space and see your art, but also how you make it, and mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot. And not every artist is comfortable doing it, but we, we're lucky enough to have some artists that are fine with opening their doors up to the public. Uh, and then separate from something like the Duarte Building, as you continue on state, down State Street, there's the Annex, uh, the new location yeah. of the Annex. I haven't been in there, but it's a fantastic. It's beautiful. Well, I not love to it. be rude, but shame on you. You got to go in there. You got to go in there. Yeah. Um, we'll go together. So, <laughs> so because so, I got to get back in there. Um, but then you continue on down, and then you you know you make the right onto Bank Street, and there's lots of galleries and lots of spaces. Um, Sarge's Comics, we hope, will be uh, a space that's involved because that's all about art. You know, it's easy to forget that, but it really is. And so, the the, the opportunity to partner artists with some of these venues um, is the way we can get more than just if we limit it to actual open studios because there aren't as many of those as, as we'd like. So to keep it downtown and keep it open to as many artists as we can, we had to open up the, 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 the formula a bit. We couldn't yeah. just do studios. Well, studio, I mean, galleries are, are very appropriate. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, is the, the studio on, um, I think it's Washington Street near the Elks Club? Participating, Washington Street near the Elk. Park. Kind of behind. There's an alleyway that goes back. A studio over there. I'll talk to you about it later. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. The warehouse. I don't know what it, I don't know what it's called. Uh, it's where Mark Patnode has it, shares a space with a few other artists. That's the warehouse. Oh, okay. <laughs> they call it the warehouse. On Black the Hall. Warehouse. No, not on Black Hall. Oh, Hall. okay. No, it's it's a different one. Okay. But. We'll, we'll figure yeah. it out yeah. because um, they've let me in. So yeah, maybe wow. They, I'll have to, yeah, we got we to talk <laughs> about that. In a very, very <laughs> informal kind of uh, situation. Uh, but there are, uh, I think, four artists that, that share a space. Well, I mean, but that's great because. You know, it's for it's for us too. Like we, mm -hmm. we're 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 helping to organize this, but we also want to go to these places and yeah. see these things and interact with these artists as well. It's also for us. So. If, if you're making us privy to we'll a see. studio that we've never heard of, <laughs> that's fantastic, you know, because I want to see that too. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the secret is, you know, an open studios is exactly what it sounds like, uh, but in an area where there aren't as many studios um, as we'd like, we can open it up and, you know, and it's, 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 what is it, scratch my back, I scratch yours kind of thing. It's, it's great when you can have um, people come into the city looking for art, wind up in a local establishment they never heard of or never been in mm -hmm. because they're looking for art. But while they're there, take a look around and see what's yeah. in the fair trade mm -hmm. store. Take a look around at this restaurant and see what they sell. So that's that's also happening. That's that's what all of our events downtown, I think, look to do is cross pollinate. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's really important because, you know, we've seen cases where like cruise ships have come into New London and the people on the ships have gotten, you know, put on buses to go to Mystic or the casino. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. And it's, I, I think New London is a little harder to penetrate. You know, if, if you, I don't know, we, we don't, don't have a good way for people who just get off of a ship or off of a train to know where to go. Mm -hmm. But we have, like, all the stuff we need really yeah. yeah if we could only figure out how to get people there <laughs> marketing hmm. <laughs> oh so that, much that, to you say have about something that. to do about <laughs> that to, right to be fair they did just come out with the map right mm -hmm. um so i think that that should definitely help um 
this map? Oh. <laughs> oh <yeah. laughs> Let's give a little time to the cultural district. Yes, yes, the cultural district in the city of New London. I doubt anybody can really see this. Um, <laughs> yeah, he might be able to zoom in. The cultural district and the city of New London have partnered together uh, to create an actual discovery map, which some of us might remember from our childhood, uh, for the city of New London. Um, isn't that great? Look at all those different businesses featured there. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think most of us have seen a map like this for other areas, and this is this is the real deal. This is an actual discovery map, um, and they unleashed it at the um, economic forum. Oh, I can't remember the date. Yeah, it was like a week or two ago, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah very weak. Still, week, still very pretty hot recently. off the presses. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty hot. Um, Where can no. people pick them up now? Um, let me see. Washington Street Coffee House on Washington Street. And probably I, Muddy Wet Waters as well. Probably Muddy Waters. This is where I got mine. I grabbed one. Um, yeah, or I would recommend if you can't find any around and you want one, uh, get a hold of the New London Cultural District. Message them on Facebook. They're, they're good to respond. Um, but yeah, I think I got mine right from uh, Washington Street Coffee House. And there, you'll see there's businesses on either side, so I bet you at least all of those businesses have them in there. But yeah. And I'm not sure if this exists online yet, but if, if and when it does, um, we'll share it on the Arts Council's website for sure. It's a good resource to have, it really is. It is. I, I, I've often you know, been downtown and you know, seen people coming off the, the train who want a restaurant or something, and just from this, just the lay of the land, mm -hmm. this, you can't see much from the train station. Yeah. Well, what a great segue, yeah. uh, because, <laughs> Um, sure, they want places to eat and drink, uh, find coffee and all of that, but um, another thing I can tell you from experience that they ask for when they get off the bus, train, and ferry is t-shirts that say New London. And as far as I can yes. tell, there are almost no places to do no. that, but there is the annex. Um, and Homeward Bound, I've been made aware, also has shirts that say New London, but here you see image uh, of oh. the annex here. At excuse me, at 140 State Street. This is their new location. Some people may remember that they were once located on Bank, um, but they have a new improved location on State Street. Mm -hmm. um, and I chose this image because it kind of shows you everything. I mean, they, they sell a, a little bit of everything. Uh, but if you encounter somebody that is looking for New London merch, memorabilia, T-shirts, I mean, please send them there. Mm -hmm. There's all different types of stuff there that says New London on it. Now, how, how many New London artists uh, kind of collaborate on what's yep. available at the Annex? Um, I believe they have upwards of 20 artists in there, and they often do um, host really big um, exhibitions. Um, so I know coming up they have one where there's going to be a bunch of artists involved on painting on the same size canvas. So that's something I'm really looking forward to. Just Same. Yeah, to see 20 <laughs> yeah. or more artists um, working with the same thing and just seeing what it turns into. Um, but yeah, they, it's definitely a, a hub for a lot of local artists here. And it only reopened pretty recently. I, yeah. A few months ago, I believe. Was it the end of March? This, I this, I mean, exact, it, it opened this, it reopened this yeah. spring yeah. for sure, which technically we're still in spring. It is, it's very new still. Um, and I think they've had three shows since they yep. opened. So, I mean, it's great. It started with the Ormo Takeover. Ormo is one of the artists that's uh, one of the founding members there. There was a show featuring three artists and music recently. Um, Our Shadows Light, I can't remember. Our Shadows. I know what you're talking terrible. about. Terrible. <laughs> um, three shows, though, at least since they opened. So, always something happening there. Um, always a great opportunity for artists to show. And yeah, like Sarah said, they're planning another one very, very soon. Yeah. They're in the middle of one now and planning another yeah, one. Yeah, I so. believe they're looking <laughs> for the end of this month, so a lot of new things coming. I always wanted to see, uh, get off topic, but stay on topic a little. I always wanted to see an effort um, w around like postcards. I know that's not you know mm -hmm. what people think of most, but it's a good opportunity, and I wonder what it would look like if the city could find five artists, say, paint some New London imagery or draw some New London imagery for the purpose of a, a postcard, compensate the artists, of course. Yes. Um, 
But then in addition to compensating them in the front, on the front end, there would be, right, if these, if these pieces sold, then there's also money that would go to the artist percentage-wise or what have you. We would like to think. Yeah, we'd like Hopefully. to Hopefully. But I mean, that's the thing. I mean, that's, yeah. if I may, that's what the council is here to do, is, is, is hear or come up with, you know, what's happening, hear what's happening in the arts community, come up with something that might benefit the arts community, um, and if it is something that the city needs to be a part of, you know, then we work with them. We can't expect them to come up with everything for the arts community. I don't want them to come up with everything for the arts community. Mm -hmm. So um, at any rate, you know, just as kind of a, 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 a concrete partnership between the city and the artists where they could say, you know, we, we don't just give lip service and say we appreciate that you exist. Like, we'd like to put some money in your pocket. And if that's um, in the form of um, something like postcards to promote the city, then great, or whatever it may be, but something like that, and of course, in something like the annex in every gallery in the city, the library, the post office, I mean, it'd be great to see little examples of mm -hmm. New London artists' work in those different places. Well, I love the idea of postcards, partly because I moved to New London in the 1990s, and I moved to Southeast Connecticut in the late 70s, so I never saw the New London that was you know pre redevelopment pre urban mm -hmm. renewal and you know mm -hmm. my understanding was is that it was a very vital place but kind of gritty mm -hmm. and i'm always looking for postcards to show like what that old new london was yeah. because i don't know it helps me get a sense of where we've been and where we're going and what we should reclaim from the past mm -hmm. perhaps that's a good so, point like postcards are, are like a moment in time and you know it, it, it might be a way to promote the city now and help compensate artists now but in 50 years it might be a way that people can look back at where yeah, we were. It could be very specific I mean it, you'd want to have it be New London imagery maybe it's five different interpretations of the whale tail maybe it's five different interpretations mm -hmm. of our skyline yeah. you know or maybe it's just let them have at it like artists like to have license mm -hmm. and create, sure. create license yeah. when they can sure. and just say you know keep it keep it new london in whatever way you can new london imagery or landmarks and have at it you know and see what they come up with if it's all new london then it's all worth selling i think now um after the, the annex you, you have on the list spark maker space yep. which is reaching out actually to everyone to be an artist of sure. some sort mm -hmm. can you talk about that are you a member of Spark? I forget. I am not, no. I forget. Not to put you on the spot. No, I just okay. could I couldn't Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do all the talking. But I, I wanted to I wanted to mention Spark because um, like we talked about the annex mm -hmm. is a business, uh, you know, but they, they have lots of opportunities for artists. But the Arts Council is committed, very committed to bringing all the opportunities to our artists that we can. Mm -hmm. um, and Spark is a great nonprofit community hub that offers many opportunities to artists and non-artists, makers, creators, you know, not just people who paint yeah. or dance, you know what I mean? It's, um, they have a, a, a wood shop, they do textiles, mm -hmm. you know, um, they have a 3D printer, they have a computer lab. Screen printing. Screen printing, they do great, yeah. I mean, it's just, they have so many different things to offer. Um, and just without getting too specific, just wanted to mention them as another opportunity for creative-minded people at all to to um, be around others that are like that. So it's sparkmakerspace.org, and you can see um, when you go to sparkmakerspace.org that there's lots of opportunities um, in many different forms um, for, for artists and non-artists. And a couple of years ago, they moved to a new space, which we just saw on screen. Yes. Uh, after having been in the Manwaring building for a few, was it the Man I building? would never be able to get my time frames correct, but they, they've bounced around. They have. Which is sort of a New London thing, you know, we can say that. Uh, but the thing about Spark is that they're very happy about is that they've found what they call their forever home. They, yeah. they own this building and they are um, making renovations. It looks great. I mean, it does look great. It, it's a really, really great space. It's a really great space. And it's at the corner of a uh, Union and Greens Alley. Greens Alley, is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. 
Yep. Yeah. Seven, yes, yeah, Seven Union Street. That's where you can find them. Um, and they're very good about tours as well. It's a big space. Uh, um, and so on Saturdays, they do tours in the middle of the day. And you can schedule uh, a tour for then or really any time if you need uh, just on their website. They're very, very good about giving people tours of the space so that you can get familiar and see if it's something for you. I, I can say when I walk into Spark, I feel like I'm in college again. And I like that. I like that feeling. <laughs> like creating and, you know, everybody, everybody around you is working on something diligently mm -hmm. and they're all still popping up their head to say something and interact and, you know, they, they work I, uh, together. It's great. I actually had gone to their free day um, maybe about a month or so ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really great to see their new space. I hadn't gone there. I had actually uh, moved out of town about a year and a half, two years ago. So it was kind of right around when they were um, finishing up the roof and everything, and it was just amazing to see. Um, they did have tours, and they had free activities for everyone to do. Um, there was a sewing activity, a, a woodworking activity, uh, screen printing shirts, and um, like you had mentioned earlier, I'm really about giving people an experience, so it was great for me to walk in and just be welcomed at the door, and um, just it was a vibrant space, so it felt good to just go in, and honestly, it's making me think about a membership. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> and the great, th one of the great things about it is, like, you know, there's no entrance exam or anything. You don't have to be a, a you know, see yourself necessarily as an artist mm -hmm. to participate. Right. That might be the best part about it. I mean, it's, um, depending on what you're looking for, maybe you want to be around other very um, highly educated or highly experienced or, you know, that that's okay. That makes sense. But it, it really isn't like that. It's certainly a space where somebody with all the training and experience in the world can go and feel comfortable and make things. Um, but I think they really thrive on providing a space for people who aren't like that to feel mm -hmm. like that, to feel like they can create and make and collaborate. Boom, mm -hmm. I just said the commercial yes. like that yes. without even trying. <laughs> uh, make, create, collaborate. Um, because some people need that to come out of that shell. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a creative person in all of us. I really, really do. Um, but what is it, like an A-type personality, I think, is like, would, 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 would quiet that part of himself to mm -hmm. get his job done or doesn't really feel comfortable exploring that side of him. And I think that's a shame. I think there's a creative person in all of us, and Spark is really a place where you can go and discover that, I think. Yeah, and they have, um, I know that they have classes also. They have classes and it's based on, um, you know, what level you're coming in at. So they do offer beginners, they do offer intermediate, and I know that they also provide training. So if you're a member and you want to work in the, wo the wood workshop, but you're, you know, it's an unfamiliar space for you, they do, um, I'm not really sure how they go about it, but I do know that they provide um, training so that you can get certified and whatever that is, so you're able to use those facilities comfortably. Yeah, depending on what you're so. looking to do, there's different certifications. Yep. Something like the wood shop, um, absolutely, they they give you that that training and whatnot. They won't let anyone just walk in the wood shop, which is great. Yeah, <laughs> which is really want. why. <laughs> <laughs> it's really you why. You don't want anyone losing fingers. <laughs> right, beneficial right, right. for all involved. Right. Um, but there's been, you know, I, I just like to take advantage of it. You know, I, I um, not necessarily one of the specific classes or courses, but it is a space to go and make things mm -hmm. for the Arts Council. Um, when we decided we'd start entering parades and we needed a banner, um, I made it from scratch in Spark Maker Space, and it was fun. It was great. It was a little project. I'd go there, work on it, leave, come back and work on it, and it was, that's what it's for. That's what the space is for. <laughs> And because I'm interested in things like land use and you know how you, we use buildings, uh, you know, it's a make, uh, Spark is a real example of an old building that I think it was the Black Elks Club previously that was stopped being used in the way it was historically right. used, uh, and it got like revived, mm -hmm. and the building itself got revived. And it became an active hub that had something mm -hmm. going on in it as well. And it had been kind of vacant for, you know, many years before Spark moved in and yes. just kind of transformed it into a living space. And its location, too, on top of that hill. Washington Street is a busy little strip there. It's nice that you can see something in those. I like to say in mm -hmm. our empty spaces, we need transactions and interactions. 
at least one of those. And in Spark, there are certainly a lot of interactions happening now, as opposed to nothing, which is great. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, so, I guess we should go on and talk about uh, Juneteenth. We have about 10 minutes left. Yeah. Uh, so, I wanted to mention Juneteenth. It's actually coming up at the end of this week. Um, but, of course, here in New London, our Juneteenth celebration is always at the Hempstead Houses. Um, and so, worth mentioning, uh, they also have vendors there. There will be music, um, lots of performances. Um, it's three days, actually, on the Friday, uh, Friday the 9th is okay. coming up. That is from 6 to 8 p.m. They do uh, a campfire discussion, which is always popular. I think we have a picture of one. The next picture, I think, is it? Yeah, that's, that's usually what they look like. Uh, that will be Friday the 9th of June, and then the 10th of June is a Saturday. That's the all-day event from 11 to 4 um, in the same space, obviously, and that's where they'll have, like, uh, Curtis Goodwin is going to MC um, music from Q105, um, lots of vendors set up, and performances again. Um, it's just a great, it's a great community day. It's a great community day. It's always a good mix, um, and they usually have stuff in the OIC parking lot across the street as well, so it's a nice little space you can operate in. Uh, they usually cut off the street, so it's safe to go back and forth. Uh, and then the 11th is Sunday, and that is a smaller event. It's just Sunday services the next morning. I think it's 11.30 to 12.30. Um, so, yeah, worth mentioning because it's coming up, and it's a really important day for the community. And the Hempstead House grounds are always interesting to visit. You know, that's probably the most intact parcel in New London. Yeah. From, <laughs> you know, from yeah. Yeah, from whatever this late 1600s, early 1700s, I'm not sure. But it didn't get burned down in the Revolutionary War. No, thank War. goodness. <laughs> it, is, it is a great space. And by this time of year, all the leaves are in, and it's nice and shaded. It's a good space. <laughs> it is a good space. Um, oh, sorry. So yeah. then just to finish up with sure. Juneteenth, um, for more information on Juneteenth, ctlandmarks.org. Um, or you can look for the Hempstead Houses, H-E-M-P-S-T-E-D, Hempstead Houses on Facebook for more information. Yeah, and they have uh, descriptions of what happens and what the hours are for each, for each of those two yeah, days. Yeah, I, I recommend going to one of those two sites to, to get more info. I can't fit it all in, but the, uh, particularly on Saturday the 10th of June, they do, there's just several events and activities taking place. I recommend you go for the whole time, but if you can't, it's good to go to these sites and see what's happening at what time. Well, this is a really big weekend because one other thing that is happening this weekend is the Golden Rule, which is a peace boat that's sponsored by Veterans for Peace, will be in New London. It's been on a nationwide tour for, I don't know, over a year, I think. And uh, currently, I think they're along the coast of, uh, of Connecticut or maybe up in the Hartford area. But uh, they are arriving on uh, Thursday night, the 8th. There isn't much going on that night. But um, on the 9th and the 10th, Friday and Saturday, they will be docked at City Pier. And people to uh, can, can sign up at, to, to take a tour. Um, and this boat had a history of anti-nuclear demonstrating from yeah. way back when. Yeah. Yeah. And there are some <laughs> afternoon programs oh. at, at St. James. Um, if you go to the Voluntown Peace Trust Facebook page, uh, that's where there are the details. And I printed flyers, but I did not think to bring one. <laughs> I, well, we have like four minutes left. And the one thing I did want to maybe cover briefly is um, what kind of challenges do you find that the artists today, now in New London area, are having, and what can we do to help? Get them, Sarah. Do you want me to get them? Get them. <laughs> um, I think that there are definitely some challenges that artists are facing. Um, can you lead me <laughs> into it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about... Um, Barriers, you know, it's nice when some yes. of these events are free yeah. because sometimes they require insurance or sometimes it's just a fee mm -hmm. or both. Um, and you know, when somebody is 
you know, looking to sell their work to make some money, those type of barriers are really, really, like they really impede, so. Well, especially, um, you know, you have to spend money to make money, so mm -hmm. spending extra money, it, you know. It to just, maybe make to money. Maybe. And I think that that's like a big factor that not a lot of people really consider, you know, as a vendor myself. I started vending um, right in COVID, actually. And then so that time, surprisingly, was actually, you know, somehow flourishing, I think, because people just wanted to be outside. It was an yeah. outside space. People could connect with others. And I think, you know, in this past year, it kind of had gone down a little bit. And I think that that's why some of us are kind of shifting, like, our Saturday art markets rather than Sundays, you know, yeah. trying to look for those better times for that to happen. But um, definitely barriers. Um, I think comfortability with, you know, just certain locations and, um, you know, we want to be in safe spaces that promote community and that promote positivity and that, you know, we can recommend to friends. And I think right. that that is really where we're kind of, um, you know, where things can be problematic is just trying to navigate that and find the pathways that are safe and that can, you know, provide other opportunities. I think that a lot of artists think that resources are extremely limited and that opportunities are really limited, but I think you know, knowing that, what we can do is look for those other spaces and, mm -hmm. um, yeah. One thing I've kind of been watching is like, you know, rents are getting really high in mm -hmm. New London mm -hmm. for living, but also for studio space, for display space, for rehearsals space. I, I don't think you can, you know, get 400 square Square foot spaces for four hundred bucks a month anymore. Oh, definitely as you could, not. Like, <laughs> sure, you know, and, and that's not unique. Fifteen years ago, that's not unique to the arts community. I mean, that's that's across the board. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in New London, there's always something to say about our landlords. Um, there always is, uh, and that's more of what uh, more off what Sarah was saying is you know finding spaces where artists can work, live, and thrive, and mm -hmm. be safe and feel safe. Um, is very very important uh, and you know we we are really committed to finding as many of those places as we can for artists um, to make sure that they can live work and thrive uh, and then of course we can't talk about this without talking about artist compensation um, yeah rents are going up food is expensive mm -hmm. artists need to eat they can't do it if you don't pay them so no more asking artists favors no know. discounts yeah, no <laughs> discounts <laughs> yeah yeah no, but but people do uh, often expect you know for exposure you know yeah. yeah giving your time and talent exposure doesn't pay rent yeah and I think I think it goes back to what you were saying earlier they're just finding a balance in everything I mean a lot of the things that I initially had done were for the community but it does pay off long term so it's just finding those things that are worth that for you yeah well thank you Eddie and thank you Sarah. Um, you can find out more uh, at the website, newlondonartscouncil.org. Uh, it's kept very up to date. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Eddie. Yes. <laughs> nice <to have> you. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll see you all at all the stuff that's going on yes. uh, next weekend and on into the summer. So yes. thanks so much. And come Thank back you. in a couple of months to let us know what's happening past you know, past sure. It's a date. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Awesome.